Hey, I want to welcome you this morning to Apostles Way Ministries. Uh, I want to share with you this morning a good cup of coffee and the Word of God. And uh, we're going to delve into it today, and I've got a wonderful thought that God has laid on my heart. And this is called Day by Day with Jesus. And I want to impress upon you today how important it is not to just put Jesus out on a shelf and pull Him down whenever you want to, but to walk with Him every day and make Him an integral part of your life to build a relationship with Him, that, uh, like a family relationship, a relationship that is so close, the Bible says closer than a brother. And so I, I, I was thinking uh, about an old song that I'd heard many, many years ago, and it goes like this. It says, Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I shall not stray, hand in hand with Jesus. And you know, after we come to the Lord and begin living with, for Him and, and living and walking in His Spirit, that relationship must grow and it must become more intense. It's a relationship like a father and a son. It's a, it's a friendship. I know I have four sons and a daughter and I, I try to be friends to my children, not just their daddy. I, I wanted to be their friend also that they could come to me and talk to me anytime and tell me their needs and their wants and their hurts. And I think that's the way the Lord is toward us. And we need to do this daily. Uh, it's just like a marriage. You need to renew your relationship every day in your marriage. You need to tell each other you love each other and care for each other and show each other that you do. And so it is with the Lord. It's a daily thing. Every day we must consciously choose to walk with God. Every day, consciously choose to walk with God in our newfound spiritual relationship that we have with Him. Now, the Scripture tells us that, that God has chosen us to show forth the praises of Him that had called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. That's in 1 Peter 2 and 9. Show forth the praises of Him that has called us. So, our lives should radiate what God has done in our life. And so He's chosen us that. So how do we, we radiate the presence of God? And how do we speak forth to others? How do we become the, the, the salt and the light, the light on the hill and the salt of the earth? How do we become that? We become that through our relationship that we have with God. Let me read just from Psalms chapter 96 and 2. Sing unto the Lord, bless His name, Show forth His salvation from day to day. Every day your life should show forth that you are a child of God and you have been saved by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Declare His glory, verse 2, among the heathen. Those that don't know Him, declare His glory. His wonders, declare them among all the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. So our lives should radiate out to the world, hey, I'm a child of God. They should know you're a child of God without you ever having to open your mouth. Just by your actions and your speech and everything about you, they should know that you are. it should radiate the presence of God in your life. There's an interesting <coughs> scripture in the, in the Lord's Prayer. We all know the Lord's Prayer. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. Anyway, and uh, we all have recited that from time to time. But in verse 11, Matthew 6 and 11, it said, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day. We're talking about day by day with Jesus. Give us this day. You know how the manna came down every day out in, out in the wilderness? And we're, we're, we're going to start an early morning word from God that's going to be about five minutes long, four or five minutes long. Every morning I'm going to give you a word of God. It's going to be called, it's going to be called uh, Daily Bread. That's what we're going to call it. I just suppose uh, surprised my wife with that name. But anyway, it's going to be called Daily Bread. And so that's what we're going to do every morning. Just a little, uh, take a scripture and expound on it to give you hope and faith for that day. But here, here it says, give us our daily bread. Jesus was the bread of life. 
You know, bread is a substance that is important to life. You know, you, a man, when he's thrown in solitary in prison, they give him bread and water. Why? Because they know the water's necessary to live, but also bread has enough nutrients to keep him alive while he's in there. Bread is a very foundation of life. Every day, God, I want to walk with you. I want your bread of life in me. That renewing of that relationship, and he gives us the manna, the spiritual manna, to take care of us for that day. To reach that place, to reach the place that we need to be in God, to continually grow and mature in Christ, it's going to take a surrendering. Now, you may not like that word. Some of you that are real bold and proud out there, so I ain't going to surrender to nobody. But you need to surrender our fleshly nature, our fleshly carnality to God each day as we walk with Him. Here I am, God. Today I'm yours. Guide me today. Talk to me today. Lead me today. Be with me today. And that's how we walk with God. Luke 9 and 23 says it like this. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, If any man will come after me, follow me, walk with me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If you're going to walk with Jesus daily, you've got to take up the burden for his kingdom and the burden for the loss. You've got to take up that burden. And, and it, we have to work. We have to continually work at serving and living for God. It, it, it's not an easy path. It just doesn't come. You just go out there and get filled with the Holy Spirit and bam, you're, you're, you're like an angel. No, it doesn't work. You've got to work at it every single day. Here he said, take up your cross and deny himself. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life, for my sake, the same shall save it. Now, he's not talking about martyrdom. He's not talking about giving your life and somebody chop your head off. He's saying surrender all of your life, your wants, your desires, your dreams, your wishes, everything you had. You give it over to God because he's got a better plan for you. His plan is far above any plan you could ever come up with. If you will surrender all of yours to him and follow his steps, you're going to walk in, in, in such peace and joy and harmony in your life and walk in the, under the covering of his blessings and protection. Paul said to the First Corinthian church, 15 and 31, he said, I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and they were trying to lift him up, make him look real big, you know, like, oh, he's just next to God himself and all this. And he said, I protest against that because I have to die daily. That's what he said. He said, I die daily. Had to crucify the flesh every day. He had to put down that. He was a murderer. He took Christians' lives. He, he, he did. He tore their families apart, everything. But he said, I have to kill that humanity that is in me every day. We have to keep that old devil dog of flesh at bay every single day of our life. And we do it by walking in the Spirit and walking with Jesus. Amen. Romans 12 and 1. Here's how we do it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You present them, like laying yourself on the altar, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is but your reasonable service. It's only reasonable that if you're going to be a child of God, you're going to present your bodies as a sacrifice unto Him. And be not conformed. Be, be not like the world. Don't be shaped like the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is what renews your mind. This word, this preaching renews your mind. Good gospel music renews your mind. By the renewing of your mind is what it's saying. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it says that you might prove what is the, accept, the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God so that people might see you and know that you truly are a child of God. Praise God. Praise God. And then I want to go back historically now and I want to take a look at the, at the first century church. That's what apostolic means. Apostolic is not a denomination. It's not a religion. Apostolic really merely means that you're trying to follow what Jesus and the first apostles taught. 
what that first century church, what the Bible actually teaches, not what the popes did, not what Martin Luther did, not what the Wesleyans did, not what the Campbellites did, none of that, none of that. We're going to go back to what the Bible says, and the Bible says alone. And here, let's, let's take a look here. You know, it says that they continued daily, that it was a daily thing that they did. Acts 2 and 46. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread and from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Right above that, it said they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So they continued daily here, <coughs> all in one, one accord, <coughs> in the temple, breaking bread, house to house, and they ate together, and they had unity together, praising God, verse 47, and having favor with all the people. When they showed the love of God and the power of God in their life, it gave them favor with all the people. And the Lord did what? The Lord added to the church daily such as need be saved. When we walk with God and walk in the Holy Spirit and surrender ourselves totally to God, God will add to your church. All you young ministers out there, I can call you young, I'm old enough, everybody's young. All you young ministers out there, listen, if you surrender yourself totally to God, just, de just delunge yourself into the anointing of God. Walk in the Holy Spirit. God will add to your churches. God will bless your churches. You'll have so many souls, you'll have to get bigger places. If you yourself will surrender yourself to God. Praise God, praise God. Now, every day, church daily, adding to it such as need be saved. Well, it's just one little scripture. No, let's go to Acts 5. Let's see if it goes on. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. How often? Sunday morning, Wednesday night? No. I didn't say anything about Sunday morning, Wednesday night. That, that, that's an old Catholic deal. Come on. Well, Wednesday night's probably the Baptist deal. I'm talking about every day, every day, every day. Every day we have to break the bread. Every day we, we have to share the word. And daily in the temple and every house cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Acts 17. Let's go on down see some more. And these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scripture daily whether things be, were so. Daily they went to the Word of God. Daily they took this, this precious Word here and, and, and then begin to read, you know, and, and, and come in here. And, and on the third day was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. And Mary was there and carried Him and He turned the water into wine. And every day they would read that Word. Daily, daily, daily. House to house. Let's see Acts 16 and 5. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number weekly, annually, semi-annually. No, 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 no. They increased with number every day. How long has it been in your churches since somebody really found the Lord? I'm talking about truly found the Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit. How long has it been? A month, two months, six months? We're, we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic here. We've got a precious, precious young man in our church. He's, he's, a, he's prophetic. He's really gifted in healing and miracles. And he's been baptizing people and praying people through to the Holy Spirit all during this pandemic. Just going on just because that's what he is. That's what he does daily. He's doing it daily all during this pandemic. People are coming to God and finding God. <coughs> that's exactly what the Bible says to do. Do it daily. Do it daily, praise God. And so we must, we must lift others up also, not just ourselves. If we put ourselves holy in God and we see a brother over there that's a little weak, do we leave him like that? If we see a little brother that needs lifted up and picked up, do we leave him like that? No, 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 no. You go to them. Just, just, I want to tell you what. I just spoke with a wonderful little couple 
they've lived in sin for a long, long time. And, and I just spoke with them a little bit about their relationship and all of that. And they're at, they, were, they were weeping on, on my front porch, wanting to know more about God. And I'm leading them to God. I, I see somebody in need, but how much more our brothers and our sisters? Here's what the scripture said in, in uh, Hebrews 3 and 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Re exhort. Uh, bring your brothers up in God. If you see a brother hurting down, I mean, there's not a day that goes by I don't call somebody with words of encouragement and, and lifting them up and picking them up. As God puts them up here and puts them down here, you pick up your telephone or you go knock on their door and you talk to them and you lift them up. Amen. Now, we must renew our relationship if we're going to help others. We've got to renew it every day. We fight an enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. We fight an enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. A soldier, an old Roman soldier, before he would go to war, he had sharpened that sword. He had sharpened that sword. we got to keep our weapons of this spiritual warfare strong and sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword, like the Word of God said. <clears throat> Praise God. Because in this hour that we're in, in this hour that we're in, the devil wants to snatch them up as fast as he can. Let's read 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succeeded thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In this pandemic era that we're in around the world, it's worldwide, people are dying in every country in the world every day. This pandemic is killing people as we're living. And, and I want to tell you what, not only are they dying physically, but so many are dying spiritually. So many are hungry and needful and need God in their life. We cannot let this stop us. I'm preaching around the world through this media right here. I'm using this media to touch hearts in all the countries around the world. I mean, thousands of people, thousands of people have, have, have become friends of mine over on Facebook and YouTube. And, and I'm ministering to them that I might bring this word in this hour. God is the answer. I saw an advertising the other day said, trust in science. I, I am a scientist. I was a chemist before I went in the ministry. I know science. I taught science before, but I want to tell you this. It's not science that saves us. It's the blood of Jesus Christ from Calvary that saves us. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to ask you to do something. If this word has meant anything to you, all that I preached, I just did a big, uh, a big five-day deal on the essentials of salvation. That's very important. And I want you to go back and view that. But if this, if this ministry means anything to you, would you share it? Would you start uh, watch parties? Would you go out and, and, and follow me on Facebook? And would you go out and, and put um, on YouTube, would you subscribe to my channel out there? I ask you to do this. If this has meant anything to you at all, the old bishop asked you to do that for him. Because the more listeners I can get, we don't get any money from this. We don't take anything from it. We just want to spread the word to you and your, those that are around you, those that you love. I want to pray right now. Father, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for all those that are listening. God, I love them and I appreciate them listening. God, I pray for them daily. I ask you to lift them up, carry them through this pandemic, carry them through the stress that they're going through. I get so many that are calling me and, and sending me messages from countries that are so impoverished that they're just seeking, seeking a bowl of rice to feed their kids. And I'm praying that God opens the windows of heaven. Somehow send angels, if you got to, God, to feed them. But Lord, let this word permeate their hearts and soul. Let them know that God called them to show forth your praises. And let them know that every day, Every day they need to reconsecrate their life and give their life to you every single day and walk in the spirit that you have given them. I thank you, Father, for all of this word in the lovely name of Jesus. God bless you today.